Hello, Rim the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. Kiabi's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize, and the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon are growing all around the world. This is episode number 362. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. What a day to be alive, guys. There's stuff going on all over the place. Boy, isn't there? (laughs) Well, we just heard of um, the raid on former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago residence uh, by the FBI. And, boy, that's that's getting all kinds of... of, uh, interest from both sides you know you've got everybody that's on the uh the left are having a heyday and rejoicing and everybody that's you know conservative is saying what does this mean i mean this is it's unprecedented it is it's gonna um i i just think that our our prayer keeps our main prayer needs to be father reveal the hidden oh i do and we know what i have my own conspiracy theory here I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put on my conspiratorial hat. You know, if he left office and he had evidence of the wrongdoings of the deep state, wouldn't the perfect political spin be he took classified documents without authorization? I, th- I think they're looking for things that he may have taken when he was in office that are not classified. I don't think that really has anything to do with it. But I think that if they ever really went after him, he has evidence that will put a lot of them in jail. And, and so... Well, the, I guess the problem with evidence in this day and age is it does doesn't it matter? matter a lot. I mean, yeah. they they put a raid on his property, and look at what Hillary is on Clinton. a laptop with yeah. Hunter Biden. Look at what they had with Hillary Clinton. It's like, it's like it's just an agenda, and they use these different letter agencies to get done what they want, and and. You know, I've been praying for years that God would forgive the sins of every person in the FBI, the CIA, the NSA, to break any occult power that's being used there for evil agendas. And so I I look at this, guys, as this is part of God's revealing what's going on for the big smackdown. Oh, there, there has to be because— political this this the three letter agency should never be used for vendettas for political power and that's exactly what's being done it's it's like if you're on the left you can get away with anything but if you're on the right uh it, it's it, and it's it's signs of uh, the way that things are run in communist countries you know uh, mm-hmm. stalin said show me the man and i'll create the this crime and uh, we're almost seeing that today but uh, but if you're politically connected and you're on the Left side of things, it's just swept underneath the carpet. Well, you know, uh, I'd listened to a, a little video from John Kilpatrick uh, where God had given him uh, a dream, I believe. I think it was a dream, not a vision. But it was where um, that there, by the end of this year it was going to look like all our, our um, rights had been taken away that that would increase, but then there'd be a turnaround. Yes. So that's encouraging. I mean, if I can hear other people saying what we're saying that I respect, then then I, I go for it. You know, I, we can miss it. Um, but I, I feel like that this is, um, this is like one of those times like a Rocky movie. You know, in Rocky Three, when he's fighting Clever Lang, um, I mean, just absolutely beaten to pieces, you know, but at the end... He he starts wearing him down. He he lets him just throw punch after punch, and he was ag- egging him yeah. on. Did all you got? He he was saying <laughs> uh, he's saying you're not so bad. Yeah. My <laughs> and, mother get hit hard, and that's you. what I feel like is going on. I think the the left is so desperate that they're going to punch beyond their means. I think that they're yes. going to lay those punches that are going to do them harm. It's it's going to wear them out. It's going to expose them more. And then God's got a plan. I'm telling you, God's got a plan. A plan. I feel it. It's like a crescendo's coming, and, and everybody's going to think, okay, man, this, this is over, game over. And God's going to come in and say, let me show you who's in control of the universe. Absolutely. And you know, some of the reports that I have been reading not only are independents, beginning to be really disgusted with what the the Democrats are doing. A lot of traditional Democrats 
are saying this this is not the democratic agenda this is this is not what we signed up for though i think because they're they're seeing more and more communist style tactics mm-hmm. that are being done and it is nauseating uh their their voter base mm-hmm. and then they're saying no this this is this is not what anybody signed up for well, i think a lot of the democrats started getting worried when um you know some of the the really liberal congressmen were pushing things and they they started opening their eyes then um you know and i and i think a lot of people even those that uh, are pro abortion and pro a lot of things that that we um we don't agree with but i think that they they you're right that they're seeing they, especially the older Democrats are seeing things that remind them of communism, <laughs> and so so they're yeah. taking a look at. It. But they, this new bill, sweetheart, that they um, that they they just put out. Did you know it increases uh, IRS employees by almost eighty seven thousand? So let me let me get this straight. Increasing the IRS by eighty seven thousand is going to help fight inflation. Well, and they they just have right now ninety three a little over ninety three thousand. Well, it's ninety three six fifty four employees, so they're gonna they're gonna almost double that. And this was a tweet by Senator Marco Rubio. He said, after today's raid on Mar-a-Lago, what do you think the left plans to use those eighty seven thousand new IRS agents for? <laughs> you know what it is. I I am telling you, they but they're here's the here's the truth. They they were so used to getting everything done. You know, the, the media just tells you what to think. They they give yeah. you their version of truth and say, now you better believe this, and don't you dare disagree with our version of the truth, or we're going to label you a conspiracy theorist, and we're going to label you a, a racist a, or whatever, and and a threat to to the dem- democratic way of life. And that is such a joke to say it. Yeah, it is. You know, maybe to younger generations that, that haven't lived in the decades we lived, they, they could buy something like that, but not our generation. You know, one of the top, and it was, a, it was a female correspondent with CNN during the 2016 election. She literally came out and said, we tell people what to think. Well, and they, they got that right. <laughs> well, you know. But, you know, uh, that I heard a reporter say, uh, that the military saying that they need 40,000 more recruits. That's a lot, isn't it? And they said that the border agents that were needed to help at the border, they needed another 5,000. And so instead of, you know, f- funding that, they're going to fund all the these IRS, new yeah. IRS. Oh, it's a, and listen, your average individual, your person out there just trying to make a living, they're going to look at this and think, oh, my word. Well, you know, I guess it's been the last two years, Nancy Pelosi, and one of the bills, and that part got kind of shot down. I kind of wonder if it may not be hidden in this. They wanted the IRS to investigate any time you spent more than $500. And I'm thinking, so the IRS is going to investigate $500 because I filled my gas tank and I went and got groceries. Yeah, that's about what it do That's about today. what it costs right now. Yeah, that's true. And so it, it, it has gotten to the place of being absolutely ridiculous. Well, lift up your heads, folks, because God's getting ready to come on he the is. scene. He's He's setting them up. They don't know it, but he is setting them up. And, and there's every time in the Bible, you know, we can look in the, the Bible and see patterns. You can learn a lot about how God does things by reading his word. I mean, you see how he does things, and he will let them go and let them go and let them go till they're so arrogant, they're saying, there's nobody can stop me. You show me somebody big enough to stop me. Well, I'm getting ready to introduce you to the almighty God <laughs> that yeah. can stop anything. You know, one of the, one of the interesting things when... Uh, if you ever shopped at Amazon.com, they will send you kind of like an advertising for the top things that sold that week to see if you're interested. Last week, you know, one of the top items that was sold at uh, at Amazon.com was it's a sticker you put on the back of your car and it says, we the people have had enough. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was the one of the top 10 selling items in America. Yeah. So there there well, is a grassroots awakening. And, and they've underestimated that from all groups. Yes, because the truth is, is there there are um, corrupt Republicans, well, there absolutely. are corrupt Democrats. I mean, you, it's this isn't about 
politics as usual. This is about about those who have sold out to the deep state. A system that has been built that God's getting ready to tear down. Yeah, I I remember we were listening to the one one of the prophets that we like, and he was going on about Congress, and he said most of the Democratic Party were nothing but a Republican Party was nothing but trained elephants, Mm -hmm. and yeah, trained by the deep state, and that's why they hate. One of the things, whether you know whether you like President Trump or hate President Trump. Uh, one of the things he has done, he has awakened something that is multi generational in America, of putting back America mm-hmm. first, of passing sensible legislation, of doing things that are positive for the average person on the street. Well, and and the whole concept of America first is really the the root of that is. That's not just saying, "Oh, America's elite and and no. we're the best." It's if. If you can't get America on the on the good path, there's not a lot of hope for third world countries. No. There's not a world, you know. Where else would you go? Well, and that's and that's what I'm saying. There's so much aid comes from here, and thing, and and not that we have not done atrocities. Yeah, there, there's oh a lot Lord, of repentance. There's so much stuff that repentance is needed over, but yeah. but God set America up yeah. for a purpose, and it's and it's not the the oh we're you know, we're special. It's it's not that type of thing. It's that a place that he could use. Yes. Two things. Number one, I believe that if the average citizen on the streets, Democrat, Republican, independent, whatever you call them, really knew what some clandestine things that this government has done that is so classified, what classified means is we're not we're gonna make sure that nobody finds out what we've been doing to include many there have been we have had presidents Senators and congressmen told, you don't have the security clearance. I'm thinking, if they don't have the security clearance, who does to find out what we've done? If this stuff was made to light, Mary, Democrat, Republican, and Independent would stand hand-in-hand with pitchforks and torches and torches around D.C. and, and say, and a lot what of do you it, think you're doing? A lot of it involves abuse of children. Absolutely. Abuse of children. There are literally laws in the books that without your knowledge, your government can use you as a guinea pig. Where they again? We we've had uh, history has been replete with like them going into uh, uh, you know let's say places that uh, that had uh, mentally handicapped people and and giving them radiation back in the fifties just to see what it would do. And I mean, just some horrible things. Horrible things. And and when the when the when the when the uh, families would go to the government and say, "Listen, we need to know what you gave them to see if we can find a cure," because now they have cancer and stuff. I'm sorry, that's classified. Uh, these these type of things need to stop in a country that's supposed to be by the people, of the people, and for the people. Well, there's there's a classification that's higher than anything our government has. Yes. And that's the truth that God sees. Absolutely. He's seen everything they've done. They're just, they're just like the people in the Bible. You know, there's nobody can see what we've done. We've been successful at this at all this time. Nobody can stop us. They forget there's an... A God in heaven that sees everything. Yeah. And I, I think what we need to realize is that the war that we see going on, not only in America, because it's the same thing, this global reset and everything, the same tactics. And one of the things I was really, this kind of blew me away. I was reading an article and it was talking about all the all the uh, parents were upset with uh, drag queen happy hour. And so I'm thinking, okay, what, what city was this is in America? It was talking about Europe. It's the same agenda. Mm-hmm. It okay? is. And all of this is a war against the God of heaven. It is well, Psalms chapter 2. And there, there is an element of this in the whole Ukraine oh, situation. And so we've got to take these situations, take them to God in prayer, because he's the only one that knows all the truth. Absolutely. We are, we are limited in what truth that, that we have available to us because the media is absolutely sewed up. And he is not only knows everything, he is El Elyon. He is the absolute judge of the universe. And it's coming down to a legal situation. Uh, and I, this morning <laughs> driving, I had to go pick up some stuff at the UPS store for the ministry, and I was, I was listening, and there's a, uh, oh, a new song by Toby Mac about God is never early, he's never late, helps on the way. He said, God's about ready to roll up his sleeves. I almost jumped out of the car because it was like heaven was saying, Daddy's getting ready to roll up his sleeves to take care of some business. Guys, that's where we are right now. 
Uh, he he is, and it, and I know a lot of people have just said, well, you know, this is just end times, and we just have to accept it. Since when does God tell his people just lay down? My Bible tells me to occupy till he comes. And expose evil. Expose evil. I mean, that that's the instruction of the Apostle Paul. And they've tried to shut the church up for so long, declaring this separation of church and state, but that was to protect the church. And, well, the separation of church and state does not exist in the Constitution, Bill of Rights, or any law. It's man-made. It's a Masonic doctrine. What is in the Constitution is the separation of the church uh, for the state trying to control the church. That's right. That was the, that was the situation, and they keep turning that around. But if the church doesn't rise up, if God's people don't rise up, who will? Yeah, and because we'll have the backing of heaven. Yes, you know He made us us mouthpieces, and so as we declare the truth, and and the truth of His word, we don't have to have all the facts of a situation because there's very few people that have access to it. But we can declare the truth that God knows. Absolutely. Which is absolute truth. We may have portions. Mm -hmm. We may see things. Mm -hmm. You know, I I saw something on um, the TV the other day, and and I can't remember if it was an advertisement or whatever, but it was talking about, like, um, how your perspective can change. And it had uh, a woman that was walking, and a guy comes up and grabs her purse strap and pulls and you think, he's robbing her. He's going to get her purse. Then you change the situation. She's getting ready to step off a step, and there's a bus going to hit her. So he's pulling. he pulls her back to save her life. So from whatever perspective you're looking at something, it can be totally wrong. Well, absolutely. That's why we go so, you know, I think sometimes we get emails, people are upset because we won't look at this. We won't dig here. We won't. We just have to to dig where God tells us to yeah. dig. There's so many situations you'd get off on a rabbit trail and never get back. But we just we try to stay steady. We try to stay focused and balanced because that's where you can stay. You know, you've got to be solid. You've got to be grounded because if if you are in looking at conspiracy theories, the number one thing that the left would want you to do is is go off half cocked and yes. just uh, you know, say, oh, they're doing this, and then start screaming. And I, I didn't do that even in the beginning of when our lives were being threatened. Everybody kept saying, well, Mary's lost her mind. Well, if they'd come and talk to me, they may not agree with what I'm saying, but they could sit there and say, she doesn't sound like a crazy person. Well, she doesn't do. sound like she's just running around saying, screaming and saying that demons are everywhere and they're going to. I was just laying out the facts of what we saw with our eyes. Well, a lot of them didn't want to come and talk to you because as you begin laying it out, they begin to shake in fear and then tell, then try to convince you that you had a spirit of fear on you that was jumping on them. And, and you weren't shaking. You were just calm as a cucumber saying, listen, this is what's going on. God's in control. God's going to take care of it. But connect the dots. Well, and it took me a while to connect the dots. Yeah. I well, mean, it, well. it was it was a situation where you couldn't even tell what was going on. You just knew something crazy was going on, but you were trying to to get to what in the world's happened in this place. What's happened to me? You know, how did these? But but that's what that's one of the traps that they set for a program multiple. They plan on you on you being so unstable that there would be. Um, Absolutely no credence to what you're saying. They want you to just be reacting in crazy ways and jumping up and down and stuff like that. And that's the problem I think they've had with me over over it all is I'm steady. Yeah. Even when I was depressed and in a horrid shape, I was always solid. Yeah. Not only in physical mass, but but I was solid in just my actions. And uh, that that's one of the things I, I remember. There we were. I was watching an interview. And it was with a very well-known deliverance minister. And he was on a TV show with the daughter of Anton LaVey, okay? And he was talking about the authority that we had in Christ and all the, all the right, saying all the right things. And she just turned and said, I'm going to curse you to death. Well, instead of him being calm as a cucumber and saying, no, you're not in the name of Jesus, he went off in this tirade and stuff and looked like a complete right. fool. Right, and that's what they want you. That's and, and she said, Gotcha. So we're supposed to believe this, right? Right, and that and that's the whole thing about you know the people that are saying the things. You have to be very careful what you say, yeah, because because you'll you'll take a report from someplace and they'll have some of the facts off, and then you you're discredited. Yeah, well, it's called counterintelligence. You put misinformation yeah. in there so that you can, if if ninety nine percent of it's true, 
and you can get that one percent that you can point out and prove that is mm-hmm. untrue, it taints the ninety nine percent. That's it. And that's one of the things they love to use. And so God can can give us stability, guys. Yes. You know, I I used to do that when when I was everything was just so crazy looking. I was just trying to uh, find out what had happened and what was truth and what was not. I would quote that over myself. God's not giving me a spirit of fear, but power, love, and I've got a sound mind. I have the mind of Christ. And you'd be surprised when you declare the truth of God's word over yourself, the power punch that is against the enemy. Oh, absolutely. Because the number one thing he wants a Christian to do is either be angry uh, and, and hostile or look like a, a looney tune. Yeah, because we're half cocked because right. we don't know all the facts. When the Word of God instructs us, prove all things and yeah. hold on to that, which is good. Guys, uh, progress on diggings. I went over there this morning, and the construction dumpster is gone. Hey, uh, there's there's I think there's two little things left that the contractor needs to do, and I mean they're itty bitty things that he'll he'll get to next week. And we get the key back on that. I got a call from the uh, company that is putting in the uh, the audio and the video. They have 90% of all the equipment in, so we're probably a week or so away from from mm-hmm. that being installed. Uh, just, and Mary and Steffi have already been decorating, and Mary's got a full functional kitchen. I do. And so and I'm getting ready to to see how I can do on those grills. <laughs> <laughs> but this, um, it's so exciting over there, and we've got. Uh, all the chairs that we can get that haven't been ordered and are waiting to be delivered. But everything else is everything we need yeah. is there. Yeah, all the ones for the tables and the chairs and the mm-hmm. fellowship hall we already have. Uh, we're waiting on the hopefully next week uh, that the rest of the chairs for the auditorium will be shipped. We should have mm-hmm. those but before the end of the month. Uh, things are going really good on that. As soon as it cools off, me and the boys, we're going to go out there and spruce up the outside and stuff. And Boy, those grandsons worked yesterday. Man well, alive. <laughs> I'm so proud of them, boys. <laughs> we had we went a, a, and got a U-Haul so we could get the rest, pick up the rest of the the chairs for the fellowship hall. A um, couple of deep freezes. Yeah, and then we got uh, came over here and got what we needed to move. And so they, were, they worked so hard. Yeah. Um, yeah, we worked them hard and long. They didn't yes, finish up did. till about 7 or so last <laughs> night. Uh, they're good boys. Uh, also, we're, we're, I'm in the process of working on the new website that's going to replace the uh, Biblical Life College and Seminary website with the strategic, uh, Remnant Strategic Learning Center. And one of the concepts, guys, I'm in the process of going through, and every message that I have preached since about 2005, we're going through updating all the metadata and everything and organizing them. Uh, they'll be up there where you can just download for free. And I've already been speaking to some of our, our people that I'm, you know, I told me, you know, next two, three years as we as we have you guys come and speak, these are speakers that Mary and I trust that we know the integrity of their ministry. And many of them have committed that when they come, they're going to bring either a very large USB drive or a, a hard drive with a lot of their messages so that this becomes kind of a clearinghouse, that all this stuff we can post, and it's, it's literally going to be a a, a – buffet of the word of god that you can just download for free and so we're i'm, I'm hoping uh by years in we may end up having three or four thousand messages up there that can be downloaded uh because the the whole thing is guys and we're, we're going to be getting into this because this message is called a revival of the full counsel of god guys it's time for us to to return to the word of god and the truth is and Mary, why don't you read that out, Amos, because I, I, I think that this, this whole thing has kind of created a situation uh, in the body of Christ that has caused anemia that we need to overcome. Oh, well, in Amos 8, 11, and 12, it says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of, of the Lord and shall not find it. And notice it, it says, it's it's not, there's no word of the Lord. It's, they they can't hear it. They can't hear the it. The famine is the hearing yeah. of the word. And, you know, in our situation, we have the word of God all over the place. But they're either not hearing, hearing it, or where they are hearing it, it's in air. It's in air. So it really puts you in a bad, <laughs> bad way. Well, what, what I think what has caused, and, and the Apostle Paul uh, shares this in Second Timothy. Now, Second Timothy, as far as the writings of the Apostle Paul tradition tells us, 
that Mary, that he wrote Second Timothy and finished it the night before he was martyred. Okay, and so he's 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 writing to young minister Timothy, and he's trying to. It's like I'm gonna I'm gonna give my life for the gospel tomorrow. And he he pins in this in Second Timothy one through uh, four, uh, chapter four verses one through five. Mary, this these are such powerful words. Now there's a warning in this, but this is also known as the charge for the minister. There is, and, and if you have a traditional ordination, this scripture is written as a charge to those getting ready to be ordained. Preach the word and season it and out. Okay, and I I, I want to read this because. Uh, it some of the things that are in this have have caused some of the problems that we're having today, and in fact, he, in fact, he even says, "I charge you." That's why this is this is the charge. Okay, he says, "I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at His appearing in His kingdom, preach the word. Preach the word. Don't preach opinion. Don't preach. Don't preach what's popular. Preach the word. Okay." Be ready in season and out of season. Now, when you're preaching the word, what happens? You convince, you rebuke, you exhort with long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, and they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things. Endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist, and fulfill the ministry. Now, he says that those in the fivefold ministry, when we when we're teaching and preaching the word, he says, convince, rebuke, exhort, and teach. Mary, I don't read in there that he, we were to hand out warm fuzzies, that we were to appeal to the flesh, that we were to serve as a motivational speaker, or just to make people feel better. In fact, the apostle Paul warns us that there's a day coming that all this will happen. And in fact, he says this, he says, for the time will come, and I think right now it's the, it's the Laodicean church, when they will not endure sound doctrine. Well, how do you not endure sound doctrine? You don't put your money and your attendance at where they're teaching truth. Okay? The, uh, in fact, Paul McGuire in one of his books documents that uh, at Wheaton College, when they were establishing this whole concept of mega churches. They brought in new age gurus to teach them how to build mega churches. So you bring in the occult to teach you how to build these, these huge ministries. Now, there are some huge ministries that are doing exceptional jobs, and there are some of them that we have seen that have really, really gotten off because it all of a sudden it becomes this huge machinery that you got to keep everything going. And it's what causes the offering to go up and what you know, keeps the people coming. Uh, I, I remember years ago, this was back in the. Uh, in the 1990s, as I was kind of doing some of my circuits, uh, and I was sitting down with some of these guys, and they said, you know, just our electric bill is $30,000 a month just for our electric bill, that when we figure staff salaries, insurance, and all that, we, just to keep everything going, we need a half million a month. I, I can't imagine uh, the pressure that's on these people. Oh, I can't either. I'm thinking, boy, you're building a machinery that's going to be hard to, to maintain, especially when you have a season that people have itching ears. They've turned from the truth. They want motivational speech. They want, just make me feel better. Don't require me to change. Don't, re- don't convince me of anything. Don't rebuke me. Don't exhort me. Don't teach me. Just make me this, pat me on the head, placate me for 45 minutes, half hour to 45 minutes so that I can go about and, and live my life the way that I want to and tell me that I'm going to go to heaven and all these different things. Mary, what's that, what that has done, especially I think there have been gatekeepers that have come into many of the uh, major Christian networks that basically have catered to this type of teaching. And what it does, we have in, uh, Justin, uh, Justin Cornwell back in the 80s wrote a magnificent book. Uh, it was called Four, Four Profiles of a, of a Leader. And he said, we have too many preachers that are just watching stuff on Christian TV to find out what's popular, and they just regurgitate it, and they regurgitate it, and they regurgitate it. He said, we're called of God to go up to the mountain and have that burning bush experience mm-hmm. where God talks to us and commissions us to go out. And back in the 80s, he says, if we do not do that, we're going to end up with an anemic church that is not going to be ready for the end times, Mary. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly where we are. Because because of this, 
we're we're ill prepared. You know, when you were talking about running to and fro out, out of Amos, one of the things that I I probably ten times a month, and Mary, it's not just in America, it's not just in our area, but I get I get emails from the UK, I get emails from uh, Australia, from New Zealand, from everywhere, saying, "Do you know of a fellowship that's teaching the word?" That is not just doing whatever they do on TV, but preaching the word. Mm-hmm. We get uh, a lot of those. I, I had one of my young, one of my students, and she's a Malaysian. Uh, you know, Malaysian don't t- they, they don't tend to be the tall in stature, and so she's I think just about five foot. And God kept calling her to Africa, and she said, "God, why, why these are such powerful preachers? Why do I need to go there?" Well, when she got there, she found out they were just preaching what they heard on Christian TV, and attendance was down. And when she began teaching, and I and I've heard the same thing. I've I've heard, I've heard from many of our students uh, here in America that if they went back and let's say on, on Sunday night, they really started just teaching the Word of God in detail. Mary, Sunday nights were over. We're having more people than on Sunday morning, because people are hungry. They're, they're, the remnant is waking up. Yeah, that's that's encouraging. And so we we we've got to wake up now. We have we have turned our ears away from truth. And it has changed the model of ministry. And so the only, and I, I think what God is beginning to do, and it's going to change the pulpit, when the pew changes and the pew no longer supports the pablum of Babylon being spewed from the pulpit, those pulpits are going to have to change to survive. Mm-hmm. As well as, Mary, I know that there are, there are faithful men and women. I, I have met so many. Mary, some of them have been, have been working sometimes two jobs, while they have been pastoring 50 people, they refuse to compromise the word. They won't do it. They would rather pastor 50 than 500 mm-hmm. and compromise the word. Mary, I think that their faithfulness in the real lean times and sacrificing and all the things they had done, I think God's getting ready to change the tide for them because the remnant are looking for preachers. Yeah, that's right. That'll teach they'll the seek truth. them out. And they will support them. They will hold yeah. their coat. They will do whatever they need to do. Now, the Apostle Paul, in the same epistle, I want, I want to read to you what he said the Word of God is for. And this is 2 Timothy three sixteen and 17. For all Scripture is given by God, is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Now, I want to read this again out of, out of the Amplified Bible, because one of the things the Amplified Bible does, it looks at the original Greek or the original Hebrew, and it adds more adjectives to, to describe what it's saying here. For every, for every scripture is God-breathed, given by his inspiration, profitable for instruction, for reproof, and conviction of sin. So reproof includes the conviction of sin. When was the last, somebody, it's the last time somebody was convicted of something, of sin in their life when they heard a message? for correction of error and discipline in obedience and for the training in righteousness and holy living in conformity to God's will and thought, purpose, and action, so that. Now, this is what's important. When you, when you have all this going on in the teaching and instruction of God's word, it's going to produce something. When we don't have it, and this is where we are right now because we don't have it, the body of Christ is, is biblically anemic, and it is spiritually diabetic because we have been fed cotton candy. We have been fed all this candy-coated junk that is the poison of Babylon wrapped in candy that appeases the flesh. And Mary, what happens? The body's full of fear. Mm-hmm. And I, I see one of two things happening. Either we are so caught up with the pablum of Babylon that we are clueless of what's going on. And a lot of a lot of ministries and a lot of churches are. I mean, we're we're, uh, you know, I, I talk to a lot of uh, a lot of my colleagues, and some of them are actually looking to increase researchers to help them just keep up with everything that's going because we're seeing biblical prophecy unfold at a, at a rapid rate, and where we're at and stuff. And they said we can't do it by ourselves anymore. We we have got to hire people to help us just keep track of everything. And then you have half the body of Christ saying, "Ain't nothing going on." It's just the same as it's always been. And then you have half of them fighting for the things of Babylon rather than the things of the kingdom. Uh, well, I think right now that's, 
That's very prevalent because I think you've got some people thinking, well, there's just inflation. We just got to bide our time. And But there are, are critical issues of food shortages in the works, and most people aren't aware of that. Oh, yeah. How many how many plants have we, or storage facilities, have mysteriously mm-hmm. burned down just in the last year and a half? It's 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 alarming. Uh, I don't know why the, the FBI would normally have been all over that because something is wrong. It's like a strategic. Uh, we saw a report last night that, uh, this one weed killer that helps save some crops or destroying other crops, yeah. and so it's <laughs> like and then the the the, the um, there was a, it was an orchard that was really being impacted by it, and the guy said he had already lost a million dollars from the last five years just from their usage of that because it, it drifted over for miles. Yeah, and what was odd about it is is the places that used it, then then there wasn't a, a detriment. But it was like it would attack if you weren't using it. So yeah. it's almost like it's some grand scheme to get you. If you don't yeah. use this this pesticide, then you're done yeah. for. And I think those pesticides are only used for certain crops. And so you have somebody growing corn three miles from you, and they spray this, and it just and it destroys your peach harvest because it's not designed for peaches and apples and different. Aren't things. Aren't you guys glad that that God gives us prayers to? Yes remove harmful ingredients from our food to sanctify it i mean guys we we have this going on we have the corruption we actually have people that call themselves christians that say that abortion is is a biblical right and when everything in the word of god is kind of, we, we have all these crazy things going on so we have half of them clueless uh, i've got a book in, in my library that specifically deals with how do you get a christian saved because they have the name, but they deny the power thereof. Well, and that's that's the problem, is they think they are saved. Yeah. And, and you know, what are the, the main things that, that would show that you are a Christian? One of them is that you're convicted of sin, yes. which there's very little of that anymore. <laughs> and if you know God, you know, if you have a relationship with him, your heart perceives what is grieving his heart. Absolutely. And it's like they're numb to it. They're numb to it. You know, I've dealt with a lot of people over the years that either worry that whether they're saved or not, or they worry about if they've committed the unpardonable sin, not really understanding what what was in the Word. And I say, do you ever feel conviction of sin? Yes. Well, the Bible says if you're his, he corrects you. That's that's called correction. And that's proof that you're saved. Well, and I think a lot of of people that, that are convicted of sin, they're saved. But, Mike, they can't break free of the bondage. Yeah. That, and a lot of people are in bondage to where they can't live victorious and they can't ever feel like they can get on top of things. But that's, that's breakable. It is. You know, who's the yeah. bondage breaker? <laughs> and I think there's two bondages, Mary. I think there's that spiritual bondage from the chains of the enemy, mm-hmm. and I think there are the bondages of bad doctrine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Okay. And so, you know, Paul's, Paul's listing all this, and he says, now listen. He says, now, when, when, when you get this, he says, so that, in verse 17, I'm going to read this in the Amplified, so that the man of God may be complete, 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 and proficient, well-fitted, and thoroughly equipped for every good work. Now, first of all, I want, there's several things I want to set in, in place here. Number one, when the Apostle Paul wrote this, all we had was the First Testament, okay? In fact, I can't find one single scripture anywhere in the New Testament to where they thought that their writings, I don't think in their minds they would ever perceive that their writings would become part of the Word of God. In fact, it was 300 years after the writings of the Apostle Paul before the New Testament was ever canonized. They're looking at the Old Testament, and they're saying this is the God-breathed Word of God. It's for correction. It tells you what's sin. It tells you what's righteousness. It tells you what God expects of you. It, It tells you how to live in the kingdom. It's all right there. And yet we are deficient in, 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 the, in the Old Testament. Uh, when uh, the uh, Southern Baptist Church, where they were actually trying to purchase the NASB Bible, and they couldn't do that, and they hired the guy that helped put together the New King James, and before he could finish uh, the, uh, the New Christian Standard Bible, he passed away. And so they had to put a whole new group together. And one of the things they couldn't get together, Mary, they couldn't find enough Southern Baptist theologians that knew the Old Testament good enough to give us a translation. They had to go to the Presbyterian church. They had to go to Presbyterian seminaries. It shows you how deficient we are in the Old Testament, but that is our foundation. And 
to have the full counsel of God's word, you got to have the Old Testament or the Second te- First Testament and the Second Testament. Right. And when you look at in the Book of Acts, this this poor early church, Mary, they didn't have the writings of the Apostle Paul. They didn't have the writings. They didn't have the Gospels. They didn't have the Book of Revelation. They didn't have these things. But with the Old Testament, with the news that Jesus was the Messiah, he was Almighty God come in the flesh, and the power of the Holy Spirit, they were turning cities upside down. Mm-hmm. Well, it was proven what was in the Torah all that time. Oh, yeah. And I remember years ago when uh, the late Dr. Dwight Pryor, and I, the first time I heard him teach, he taught grace and revealed Jesus greater from the Old Testament. I remember the first time I heard him, and it was it was the yeshiva. I, my whole front of my shirt was wet because I was crying the entire time thinking, where has this been my whole life? I had never seen Jesus more clearly right. in what he was revealing out of the Torah mm-hmm. about who Jesus was, how to walk in the kingdom and the yeah. grace of God. I mean, it's, it's like when you take that, it's like, oh, no wonder the, the Apostle Paul said this. No wonder this, you know, because this was the foundation that all that the early church had. Well, and you understood Almighty God why he would wipe out groups at a time. Yes. You, you could look at it and Ephilim. say that's why he did it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, in, in, in Ephesians 2, where, where the Apostle Paul was talking, he said, and, and having, having built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ being his chief cornerstone, in his mind, Mary, you know, the writings of the apostles had not been correlated yet. Hebraically, he was not speaking of Matthew. He was not speaking of any of the apostles of Jesus. He was speaking of Old Testament apostles and prophets. Apostles existed before the days of Jesus. In fact, biblically, the first apostle was Moses. He was sent from the presence of God to get something done. Now, the the, the sages of Israel are in debate on who the first prophet was it was either enoch or abraham but no matter which one it was he said listen our our foundation goes all the way back to what god did from the very beginning and all of them this is the exciting part jesus is the one who made abram or made adam he is the one who took down pharaoh and so he's the cornerstone and all the saints of god First Testament and Second Testament have to line up with him. He's the cornerstone. And he says, we're built on that foundation. And so our biblical foundation, Mary, has to start from Genesis and flow all the way to the book of Revelation. Otherwise, we're anemic. And he says, now listen, the purpose is uh, is profitable for instruction, and that's doctrine. And doctrine, guys, is not what you post on the wall. And I was raised old Baptist, and they used to have their doctrinal statement posted on the wall. These were our creeds. Biblically and Hebraically, that's not what that means. The Word of God is for instruction how to live, how to walk in the kingdom. Okay? And it needs to convict us of sin. It needs to bring correction of error and discipline and obedience. And what I love, training in righteousness and holy living, that we need, there needs to be conformity to the Word of God in the body of Christ. That mean, you know what that means, Mary? Regardless of what the name is on the door, we all act the same if we're conforming to the Word of God. That's right. Okay? Now, when he goes on, he says, now, when all this is done, you're complete, you're proficient, you're well-fitted, and you're thoroughly equipped. Now, the, the Greek word here for complete uh, means to be fitted. And I want, I want to read what, because uh, uh, the King James says, may be perfect. This is what Adam Clark said about this. He said, to be fit or adapt, it properly signifies an integer or a whole number in arithmetic to which nothing needs to be added to make it complete. Mary, how many believers have we talked about and we, we see that are running from meeting to meeting because they feel incomplete? They, they feel they, they, they're, they're, they're in search of discovering self or whatever. Or trying to get out of bondage. Well, I mean, that's... Well, I think there's the getting out of the bondage, but I think they're the ones, I think they're also ones that, you know, have you ever ate a bunch of junk food and although you're supposed to be full, your body's saying, I need good food. Yeah, it makes you feel like you're still hungry. <laughs> you're still hungry, yeah. and so they run from thing to thing uh-huh. to thing. I thought that this is the approach that when, when you get the Word of God, the unfiltered truth of God's Word under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you walk away changed and satisfied, and you feel complete. Mm-hmm. 
I know now who I am in him, and I've broken down the lies of the enemy, and I have discovered who I am in Christ. And it goes, also thoroughly finished is from, uh, is from the intensive and complete, not only complete in himself, but listen to this, as to his integrity, religious knowledge, faith in Jesus, and to love God and man. This is what happens, and this, 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 is, this is why the body of Christ is anemic. And guys, if we cannot get it from the pulpit, we have, we have got to become didactic. We have got to search it out. We have got to build up our own libraries. That we, we have got to get it ourselves. And then when we find a minister of God that is teaching the truth, we need to roll up our sleeves and support them mm-hmm. and to bless them, not to fight against them because eventually they're going to step on your toes. I'm, when I was raised to be a Baptist preacher, one of the things I was taught is that if you if you cannot – in the middle of a sermon, find a toe to step on, you're not worth your weight in salt. Oh, when I got out of bondage, I, that's what I liked. I wanted that my toe stepped on. Show me what's wrong. Show me, yeah. you know, and, that, and I think that that comes. I think the, the having your ears open, having your eyes to see, that, that's all a part of, of what God's getting ready to do. I think what God did in my life Way back in 1994, we're getting ready to see in many lives, maybe not the same situation, but all of a sudden, you're going to have such a hunger for the word, a thirst for righteousness, because that that automatically came when God met me in yeah. 1994, heard my prayer, and and took all that stuff off of me for for that eight months I had to learn the word, to get get grounded in, in the word of God and in my faith in God. And then when it all came back, I could fight it off. And that's what, if you don't ever experience that, you don't you wouldn't know it's possible. Yeah. Because you just, I remember that, you know, trying to remember how I, I was in that depression. God keeps telling me to try to connect back with that so that I can show other people the difference. And when, when God came on the scene and backed up off the tentacles that, that the kingdom of darkness had in me, Mike, everything changed. Everything looked different. It was like for the first time in my life, I actually felt what it was like to be free. Well, you had a prophet of God literally said that God changed your blood type. In other words, he disconnected you from your bloodline long enough. Yeah, I think and, to back everything yeah. off that was on the generations and stuff. And guys, this, this, this Mary's testimony is something so important for you to, to, to understand that when God sets you free, it's not to make you more at ease in Laodicea. Which it is to free you up so that you can absorb everything of the Word of God, mm-hmm. because eventually you're going to have to face your giant and slay it. That's that's one of the things as part of her testimony when she was struggling with it again. God says, "Raise up in what I taught you, mm-hmm. and take your authority and bring it down." Yeah, I just didn't have any idea that it was demonic. Yeah, I just had looked at my whole life of as I was a personal failure. Yeah. At everything I'd ever tried, anything that I was trying to do, didn't matter what. I I, I just feel like I couldn't get on top of things, and I, I was getting you know hearing the teachings like you were and the faith movement and things like that. And I thought, boy, if this is the way life's supposed to be, I, I couldn't. I tried talking like they talked, and you know nothing worked. And so my my point is is you may have went through your life and just felt like no victory. You don't know what's wrong. Ready to give up. Don't give up on on the verge of a miraculous thing that God's getting ready to do because a lot of people are in bondage because of what they've done with mind control, what they've done in the nation, what they've done with, with technology. God is getting ready to make a breakthrough for you in such a miraculous way you aren't going to believe it. And and what's going to change the nation? We have to vote and and vote for the candidate that we feel is close to God as possible and and concerned about yes. what God says. But what's actually going to change everything is God's coming on the scene. Absolutely. And he's coming as a judge over this wicked empire that's been built that that has been built right here in America. Yeah. Because it's not the it's this this structure is is counter to God. Yeah. And so God's going to remove a structure, then it's up to us. It's up to us to to go ahead and and get everything lined out to to get in the word. And the number one prayer that I would say for anybody to say is God, give me 
a hunger for your word. Absolutely. Give me a thirst for righteousness. There's nothing wrong with just crying out for that because if you get that, if God does that for you and backs off things to where you can, you got it, guys. Then it's yeah. just go forward. That's one of the reasons that I'm, I, I think God has me building the new website where I can put as many resources I can get up there. When God sets you free, go download all of it. Put it on a hard drive and just start to start listening to it. I remember years ago we went to one conference in, in Tennessee, and this guy come up to me, and he's, he was a little bit of a joker. He said, Dr. Lake, he said, I hear voices in my head all day. Well, he had been listening to us. He had, he had a little MP3, and he had downloaded the ball. He was just, and he, he goes, he goes, you know, he goes, I have a job where I can work. And he says, when I get really excited at something you say, and I shout and everything, he says, I don't scare people around me because he says I'm a janitor and I'm just, <laughs> and he's he's kind of working in an empty building, but he he just downloaded. You know, how much how much time do we waste doing other things or watching or watching Babylon TV when guys we need to get the word. We need to get the word. And so when God sets you free, and I believe there's a there's a thing coming, guys. Mm-hmm. I, I believe when he does It's a smackdown. <laughs> smackdown. God's about ready to smack down the enemy for the sake of the remnant. Uh guys, when he does, jump in the word and get all of it that you can get. Get it deep down in your heart. Learn your authority. Learn who you are in Jesus. Learn who he really is. Get it deep. So that when that Goliath shows back up. There's another smackdown yeah. coming. That's he said, right. You're ready said, to take him. That God that smacked you down has now filled me up. Yeah. And you know what? He's saying, ready for another smackdown, Jack. Because <laughs> I'm like David. I may just have this this little sling, but I've got the five stones of grace, and I'm getting ready to take you down, That's Jack. it. Well, Father, we just pray for the remnant wherever they are in the world. Father, we ask for an awakening. Father, we ask that you would cause them to be hungry for your word, hungry for tooth. Father, let us get nauseated at the pablum of Babylon and sugar-coated things. But, Father, cause us to cry out for the meat of your word so that we can be filled up. And, Father, right now we just speak over a person that's in bondage. And, Father, we mark that bondage for destruction. And, Father, we declare that heaven will begin moving from this day forward to tear that thing, to root it out, to destroy it, to tear it down in the name of Jesus, never to be erected again. And that you would give them a hunger for the word of God like they have never had. And Father, the next time that thing that planted that in their life shows up, it's going to get smacked down in Jesus' name. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.